And welcome back to the Homemade Podcast of Sports with your host, Jay Pops. Guys, this is the overreaction edition. Um, I have two very special guests, Mr. Jay Sims and Mr. E. Crenshaw. Uh, we're going to sit here and we're going to discuss some things. But first and foremost, man, uh, I was out there at the game. Just want to say this here. That was a beautiful, beautiful experience for me and my family. Uh, I did not know that my oldest son was going to be into the game that much. And I did not know that my youngest son was going to come home in the next following day, which is today, and say, hey, dad, I want to play football. You know, sign me up. As of right now, right now, I think they've taken him outside. He has been in here just throwing up the football everywhere for at least two hours straight. Uh, he has a little soft football, and he actually carried one to the game yesterday. Uh, that was a small one. That was a Texas a and football because he pointed it out in the story and said he wanted it. So, hey, it was a good experience. So it was a red, white, and blue game. That couldn't have been much better than what it turned out to be. Uh, after the game, of course, uh, we had the fireworks show. They showed that, stuff like that. Uh, and even before the game, man, they had all the planes, uh, you know, flying with the helicopters and stuff like that. So, it, it was real good, man. Halftime was good. Uh, things of that nature, man. Like I say, it was a really, really good experience overall. So, now we're going to talk about Texas A&M versus Kent State. First and foremost, we know it was Kent State. I want y'all come on here and say all of that nonsense. And Yeah, man, y'all wouldn't play nobody but Kent State. I hear what you're saying, but I look up Auburn score 60 against Akron. Akron is far worse than Kent State, people, in case you did not know. Also, Kent State led, I think, either the MAC or the nation in, uh, in I think, uh, yards per game or something like that last year. That was 2020 COVID year. I understand that. With that being said, AM still look good. The defense is just about everything that. I thought it was going to be, and it's just about everything that I said it was going to be. Also, not only just talking about us, talk about some other teams that's up there, you know, that that people wanted to hype up the top 10. At least I think what half of the top 10 right now, or at least 14 out of the top 10 right now, has all went down. And then wasn't one of them. Okay. Uh, but they have all went down. Also, with that being said, Teams that were in the top 25, some of those went down. Teams like Wisconsin, the biggest one, the biggest shocker that I thought at least I, I thought they they were at least going to be competitive. I don't want to hear I don't want to hear this nonsense here when I name this team because I know y'all gonna bring this up. So I'm gonna say it before y'all even say it. LSU losing to UCLA badly. No, no, I'm not trying to hear what no LSU fan has to say. I know y'all won the title two years ago. You come on here and say, oh, when well, AM ain't won one since 1930. I'm tired of hearing that bull crap. I'm going to kill it before it even much start. They look bad. That was the same 2020 team that I seen. And I was one. I'm not an LSU fan by all means, but I gave them the benefit. I said, all right, yes, Kobe. So they got the top five best talented team in the nation. And them has the eight best. Uh, Alabama has number one, Georgia number two, you know, stuff like that. Just teams in the SEC alone. It's, it's, it's a lot of talent. What I seen out there on that field against LSU, and I didn't watch the whole game, that looked like a team that was, that probably had, you know what? I'm not even much going to say they didn't have talent. That's just poor coach. At this point, Ed Orgeron doesn't know what he's doing. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to let that be known, let that be what it is. He, do, he does not know what he's doing, and I'm going to stick with that. All right, so anywho, going along from that, uh, let me give out a couple of shout-outs to the guys that were at the game that came up to me. Uh, I thank you guys for, uh, you know, noticing, actually noticing who I was. Once again, man, I'm not used to that type of, uh, you know, like attention, 
stuff like that. But I thank you guys for being so supportive of this podcast, man. To see you guys actually at the game that actually watched it and say, man, you look familiar. You that guy Jay Pops, aren't you? So, yeah. So, I thank you guys for that. One of them I want to give a real big shout-out to, Mr. Sterling uh, Sherlock Clark. And I want to give a shout-out to him because, man, we had about a good five-minute conversation. Uh, he told me a lot of stuff, and at the end of it, he gave me his Lone Star Real Estate call. I'm going to put this up there so you guys can see. So, this is Mr. Sterling, man. Uh, he is a real estate agent. Yes, that's the Aggie connection for you. He's a real estate agent. Didn't even much tell him that I was looking for a house. Just so happened I am looking for a house this year. Isn't that crazy? So, Lone Star Real Estate. And on the back, that's his number here. Not sure if you guys can see it, things like that. But please get at Mr. Sterling. Uh, Mr. Sterling, if you're listening, I told y'all I can give you a shout out. Here you go, my man. So, Sterling Real Estate Group. Uh, that's that. But I thank all of you, man. Like I say, that was a real good experience, man. I love seeing that. The crowd was live. I mean, it's it's time, man. This this is Aggie Land. Well, what else do you expect? What did you expect? It was like about 96,000 of us there. So excuse me for one second. So uh yeah, man, it 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 was a real good showing, real good showing. But but Without further ado, and to uh, say the least, got Mr. J. Sims, Mr. E. Crenshaw, let them introduce themselves. But they're also going to talk about a couple of things that they seen in the game as well. Uh, Mr. J. Sims was actually there in person as well. Wasn't able to catch up with him. A little bit too many, too much going on in his first game. I figured that was going to happen even more. Uh, we, were, we were all a little bit too overexcited. The student section was crowded. I didn't know that our student section was actually that big, but if I'm not mistaken, the student section is from the first level, second level, which is just 300, and the fourth level, which is the 400. Am I correct? But it's just all on one side, on the visitor side? Yeah. I believe. Yeah. I figured that because that side of the stadium stayed packed three and a half hours from They did not leave. I don't think I seen anybody walk down the steps throughout the whole night that much. That's how much of a standard they put their students out to be. Like, wow, and that really played a big part. You know, before I turn it over to you, I just want to let everybody know around the nation, Texas a and is going on a two-year run of being undefeated at home. I need you guys to let that sink in. We are once again going on it. I didn't say we were on, I didn't say we were undefeated for two years. I say we were going on a two-year run. Last year marked the uh inaugural actual whole season without being beaten at home. I'm gonna say that once again. It marked the inaugural season of not being beaten at home. This year we just got our eight home victory in a row in which marks the first time it's been eight straight wins at home in 20 years. A lot of y'all didn't know that, right? A lot of people out there are sitting there like, wow, man, I ain't even know that. Yeah, it's been 20 years since we've actually gone undefeated at home. Look, I, I've already said it. I'm tired of going on a rant and saying what I said. I said that this team... And this coach reminds me so much of R.C. Slocum. Uh, the difference here is that Jimbo Fisher, and I ain't trying to make it out to be a financial thing, but Jimbo Fisher actually has the money to pay all of the coaches on the staff. While Texas A&M, rather, has the money to spread out to all of the coaches, primarily Jimbo Fisher, because he's head coach, so he's got to be the one to sign off on. He has the money to pay all the coaches. Problem was that R.C. Slocum lost most of his coaches due to financial reasons, you know what I mean, and things of that nature. Uh, but we now have a coach that has gotten a new contract. Nobody got the new contract. We need to pay his other coaches as well. So pretty sure somebody's going to get fed after this season or before the season. So 
Anywho, man, like I say, uh, we're 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 kind of going back to those '85 days, '85 through the '90s when RC went on the entire run of being undefeated in the Southwest Conference. It's not the Southwest Conference by any means, but it's the Southeastern Conference. I say the ones again, it's the Southeastern. It ain't the Southwestern, it's the Southeastern. Ring a bell. So. Now it's time to go ahead and get down and get on it. Uh, but without further ado, I'm going to pass this over to Jay Sims. And I'm going to let him, uh, I'm, I'm going to let him take over the microphone, man. Jay Sims, it's your time. Hey, Jay, thanks for having me on again, man. It's a pleasure. I, 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 I was ready for football season to start, man. Hey, um, how about that crowd last night, man? It was pretty electric, wasn't it? For Real the uh, for the um, twenty year anniversary of uh, of nine eleven, it it was good to see that that crowd showing up like that. And you're right, the uh, the student section, man, they really showed up too. Mm -hmm. um, one thing, uh, there were several things I, I I I took from this game. Haynes King, he uh he he played about as well as what I thought he would. Man, he he had some uh, he showed up. And he 21 for 33 mm -hmm. for 292 yards, two touchdowns and three interceptions. And I want to say, I know one of those wasn't on him, mm -hmm. but maybe even two of those, you know, it was just, it's just, you know, he, he had a good game. Um, I'm ready to see what he can do against what he can do against Colorado. Come right. This weekend. Right. And uh, our, uh, let's see, it was, my thought, it was uh, the Anaya Smith, Achain, and Spiller show on offense, man. Uh, Achain, 12 for 124, two touchdowns. Yeah. Spiller, 17 for uh, one, 113. Mm -hmm. uh, he didn't have any touchdowns, but, man, he – he was able to open up that offense for uh, for some of uh, Haynes King's throws. You know, mm -hmm. Haynes King was able to go long because, yeah. uh, for one, they couldn't really contain Haynes King for the most part. The offense, the offensive line had a pretty good game actually. Yeah. They yeah. they didn't allow the the defense to really penetrate a whole lot. There were there were several times when the offensive line looked kind of flat footed out there, but that's to be expected. Yeah. But uh, you know we were able to see Haynes King's on Haynes King's arm, mm -hmm. uh, in in effect. You know, in several of those plays. Uh, okay. Okay. Hold on. Um. You know, I was. Let's see. I'm. I'm sorry. The kids. Kids were asking me a question. Um, oh, hey, man. Let's see. Homemade podcast sports. Yeah. Man. Go ahead. Yeah. Like, man, well, homemade. Hey, you at home? Right here. You at I home? Be comfortable. Before. Look. With that uh, being said, go ahead. Uh, I tell you, I tell you, a guy on defense who really showed up was uh, the true freshman Shamar Turner. Yeah, he for did. one and a half, one and a half sacks, man. That, he was, he was a difference maker on, on that defense, man. He really was. He was able to get through several times mm -hmm. when, uh, when I was when I was watching yesterday. He was able to get through the offensive line several times and mm -hmm. and disrupt some plays. Yeah. Um. I'm 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 very I'm very optimistic after what I saw. It was. A very oh, it it took a while to work through some of uh, some of the aches and pains mm -hmm. of a, of a new of a new quarterback working with with wide receivers that are pretty much established for the most right. part. You know what I mean? And uh, it, everything ended up working well after the first half. Mm -hmm. There was there was a little bit in the first half where I was kind of a little nervous. Because you not only had Kent State, you had the referees, mm -hmm. the officials, just they they had one of the they had one of the worst officiating crews that I can remember. And actually, Jimbo Fisher in his in his press conference yesterday, 
mm-hmm. said something said something about how bad the officiating was. Yeah. And uh, it's not very often, you know, you see, I, I don't remember a time I've seen Jimbo Fisher, since he's been with A&M at least, bring up how bad officiating was. Right, right. I mean, if it, if it wasn't a, a momentum killer, you know, once once it felt like we were starting to get momentum, uh-huh. it felt like something would come up to where it would just suck the life out of us just a little bit. And then we'd have to work our way back in. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I tell you what, what really shifted momentum was Leon O'Neill's interception for 85 yards, man. Yeah. That, yeah. That was that was huge. Yeah. And that's what that's what shifted that momentum. That's what the crowd needed. That's what the team needed. Mm-hmm. And man, I after that, I, I started feeling more comfortable. I saw that score and I was like, OK, now we can kind of play around a little bit. Now we can kind of change the playbook, see what see what Haynes King can do. And uh, mm-hmm. I, I was I was happy. I was able to sit comfortably in my seat after that. I was in that it, that almost uh, that that flying V that the defensive line had just around uh, Leon O'Neal, you know, as he was running for that touchdown, just the way they were blocking for him. And man, it was, that was something to see. That was a lot of fun. And it, it, it woke everyone up, man. Yeah. It did. So. It did. It did. So, was, oh, E, what's what, up? What you think about it, man? What you think? I mean, <clears throat> first of all, glad to be on, man. Again, with mm-hmm. you guys, you know, football season has arrived. We got our first W this weekend. Right, but right. To cover the team, man, offense. Uh-huh. I, I was starting offense. Offense, we looked apart. We looked every for the most part, we did everything I expected. Running game, right. pass game. Quarterback right. looked phenomenal. When you uh-huh. come out as a true freshman, hadn't played uh substantial, or well, hadn't really gotten substantial playing time, you're mm-hmm. gonna make mistakes. But yeah. as a coach, watching football and knowing football. As long as you make them mistakes full speed, you're okay. So I didn't see a lot. I look for a lot of uh, bad call, not bad calls, or miscommunications. I didn't see any miscommunication. He was in command of the offense the entire game. So as far as the quarterback, I'm not really worried. Just clean it up, move forward, continue to prog- pro- pro- progress. And I mm. think offenses, offensively we'll be fine. We put up damn near uh, 600 yards of offense. Yeah, so so you know what? Not to cut you off right there, uh, I'm, I'm gonna just say one good thing, and I'm, I'm gonna get the microphone back to you. We had a total of, because I got these stats right here in front of me, and this is what shocked me, and this is what sh- should shock everybody around the country, uh, is um, especially our AM fans. We had a total of 597 yards. I'm going to say that once again. We had a total of 597 yards. We had five turnovers. Yeah. You know, just just like you said, we need to clean that up. We had five. But we had 597, and the offense moved way faster than what I've ever seen. Although we still dominated time of position. On the reason why we dominated that, the defense played lights out. But go ahead, man. I'm gonna go ahead and pass that mic on mic on back to you. But yeah, I mean, offensively we look great. You got spill over 100 yards. We expect that. I chain. I even kicked into another gear. <laughs> yeah, I think man. so. He he, 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 he <laughs> turned it up. I mean, he he picked up right where he left off in the uh, Orange Bowl. Right. He looked phenomenal. Uh, offensive line. I, w- I was kind of wondering who Jimbo was going to go with at center. It didn't. Mm-hmm. It didn't surprise me to see him go with Bryce Foster. Did y'all see that? Me at all. Yeah. I don't think he, he gave he, up a sack. Did he? Nah, he didn't. Oh, I he know didn't he. Give up a sack? Uh, wow. uh, he he rant and raved about having Matthews and Matthews, but I feel like him ranting and raving about Matthews only pushed Bryce Foster to improve and, and to compete more. And once he got uh, the green light. It was all go. So offensive line wise, I think we look great. Jameer Johnson, outstanding job at left time mm-hmm. uh mm-hmm. transfer from Tennessee. Ken Green got a holding call. Yo, that's, man, very, I, that's very you know what he just said something about, about the flags. That's why he yeah. was kind of uh, come on now, ref. Really, yeah. so, you gotta the refs were, 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 were weren't that great. 
So yeah. uh other than that, man, offensive we offensively we look great. Uh defense, psh, I ain't worried about nothing. I mean, you got the freshmen, they ball. You got the guys that's been there, they ball. It, it, they look more cohesive as a unit. Yeah. They look like they look they look the part and they are the part. And they yeah. got each other's back. And I think that's that's the difference in a and M now than A and M back then. I feel like back then it was like when we had like Miles Garrett, you had Justin Evans and Donovan Wilson, all those, those guys were stat guys. It's like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. well, hell, I'm gonna get mine. But now it's yeah. no, we're gonna, we gonna, we gonna eat together. We're gonna what, yeah. if you step, I step. You yeah. go that mm-hmm. way, I'm going that way. So it's it's more cohesive, they're more unified. So mm-hmm. and that 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 all comes down from the coach, man. But other than that. I think we look phenomenal. I don't see nothing really to worry about as long as we continue to take the next step. Every week, take the next step. Yeah. I think we'll be yeah, perfectly true. fine. That, that, that's pretty much all I got. All right. So, with that being said, man, I want to go ahead and backdoor you uh, so far as um, so far as like defense. So, from what I've seen on that defense and from what I know on that defense, Leon O'Neill is just about everything he said he was sought out to be. Um, a lot of people have to continue to remember, and I will remind everybody about this too, because I've been saying this ever since I made this podcast. Leon O'Neill was a four-star recruit. Once again, people love to say stars no matter. Yeah. Me, I think highly different about that. Um, I think the game last night from Georgia showed you that. I think just about how well those four and five stars can show up when the game is online. That's a whole nother story. You know, and we'll get into that in just a little bit here. But uh, Leon O'Neill was a four-star recruit. Leon O'Neill was also top 80 in the country coming out mm-hmm. that year. People don't understand that that 2017 uh, recruiting class was headlined by Leon O'Neill. Yeah. Also in that 2017 class, and this is the reason to watch, and let me go ahead and clear up this notion here. The Mon Demons will not transfer out people. Y'all have to stop, stop saying that and stop believing it. Mon Demons is here to stay. I seen the injury from that young man, and yes, I did see the Mon Demons get on. I saw him, I saw him, I saw him. Uh, I, I know what number the young man wears, and he's not going to change his number. I even saw Jimbo Fisher himself even talking to the Mon Demons when he brought him out the game. Mm-hmm. Just to tell him that, hey, I got you. Mm-hmm. Just hold up. I know what you got. These fans know what you got. As soon as you catch that ball, so whatever game he's going to catch the ball in, that stadium is going to go crazy. And we all know this. But let's take it back just a second to DeMond Demons and what class he came in with. He came in with his 2017 class in which not a lot of people believed in that class like that. All right? Because I think he brought in like the 17th ranked class recruiting that year when he had just came. So it was not a lot of people that believe in that class like that. Uh, I think Kellen Munn was before that class in the 2016 cycle, if I'm not uh, mistaken. So once again, it's a lot of people that didn't believe in that 2017 class. Leon headlined that thing. And Leon is out to prove himself this year. He's also out to prove his draft stock, but he's out to prove himself as being, no, I was actually that guy coming out of high school. I don't know what you thought, but I was actually that guy. The plays he made last night were exceptional. He turned into that guy. He got flagged one time. The flag got picked up. Immediately, as soon as the flag got picked up, I've never ever saw this before, period. As soon as that flag got picked up, he made the play for the pick six. Right, the whole right, after, right after. Right after. Crazy. I mean, immediately, right after the flag was picked up, Leon caught that interception, ran 85 yards down the field. So this is what people aren't saying, and this is what people didn't say. You said it, though, I'm glad you mentioned this. They play as a team unit on defense in which we hadn't seen in a long, long time. When Leon ran down the field on that pick six, I saw DeMond and Richardson. And Leon said this in his post-game of press conference. 
the money Richardson came from out of nowhere and made sure that he made the touchdown. Oh, yeah. Because I'm talking about when I say he came from out of nowhere, he came from in the back, sped up, made sure that a block was going to be made on the last man down the field, and that's when Leon dived into the end zone. Once again, that stadium went so crazy. When I tell you, I think that's when I had lost my voice. That stadium went phenomenal, man, because for us to just see Leon finally take that next step, granted it was Kent State, I know what people are going to say, but he took that next step as a leader and balled out. He yeah. said he wanted six interceptions before this season was over. He got two of them already. I remember that man saying that like great. He got two already. He's got four more to go. We got about 12 games in a regular damn season. If he not already got two, I think oh, he's, yeah. going to yeah. he's going to over exceed He's going to over exceed it. He's going to come out as he's going to come out of AM as one of the best safeties to ever play for Texas AM. That's just me. That's what I think. But I think he also put on the show because not a lot of people knew this too. Bryce Anderson was at that game. I'll say this once again, people. The 2022 commit that was a uh, battle between us and Texas in which the whole state of Texas was watching this recruit, trying to see where he was going to go to. That young man was at that game. They put on a show for guys that were at that game. A lot of people don't know this too. A lot of people do know. Manziel was also at that game. Once again, it was some people there that was shifting the moment and looking at that moment. Yes, Manziel was there. Uh, I don't think they shouted him out, but I did see where Bryce took a picture. No, I don't think it was Bryce. It, it was somebody that took a picture of Manziel. But Manziel was there, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Yeah, it was. He, he was actually on the sideline. So, another play, and I'm going to pass this on to old J.C. Was when Haynes King, and this will be on the highlight real film. I know it, a lot, a lot, a lot of people gonna bash me about this because they already started bashing. We seen a Manziel highlight in 2021. That young man made something out of nothing in which we hadn't seen since 2012 through 2013. That was the two years Johnny was here. The last time we seen that play being made was against Alabama. When I tell you that the young man actually ran into his lineman like Johnny Manziel did against Alabama that first season, that's exactly what he did. He didn't lose the ball, nothing like that. But he ran into his offensive lineman, backed up, looked at another offensive lineman, was about to run into him, ran around, made a defensive lineman trip over his feet, fall down, beat the other one, ran, and got the first down. I say, God damn it, you know what? That is what's going to help this team yeah. beat the big dogs of the Cubs. Mm -hmm. That is what we were waiting on. Haynes King is letting himself be a true dual threat quarterback. He knows that he's a dual threat QB, and that's, his, that's exactly what he did last night. He was a dual threat. By all means, the passing stats didn't look pretty because of the turnovers and a little bit of an inaccuracy, but that can be fixed as the season goes along. Like I say, with Caleb Chapman being out there, things like that, it's a lot of people that won't even much put this play on the highlight reel. That young man bombed the ball down the field. We've been waiting to see, and he threw a couple of bombs. He just wasn't able to connect on all of them. But that one he did connect on, Caleb Chapman got out in front of his man and caught the ball like this while running. That's what we wanted to see with Kellen Moon so bad. Bread basket. We can see mm -hmm. it. We can see it. He, he actually caught a young man while he was running. Golly, we've been waiting on that, dude. Oh, we've been waiting on that. Once again, the a and statement went crazy. It went crazy. That was the play. If I'm not mistaken, JCM, where we got up to the goal line, but we had thrown we, we oh he he threw he threw an interception. Yeah. I believe the team was a little bit overexcited and they were just so happy to be in front of fans 
That's the only reason oh, why they well, play like this. Well, that, that's what you're going to get from a from a young quarterback like this. Please, that's it. Go. That's growing pains. That's growing pains, man. Mm-hmm. But we, you brought up that play, that Johnny Manziel-esque type, type play that we saw. And mm-hmm. I was the same way. I was like, if that was Kellen Mond, I, I, don't get me wrong. I was a Kellen Mond fan. I wasn't yes. his biggest supporter. We love him by all means. Yes. yes. We but love him. That would have been a five or six or seven yard loss, you know? That would yeah. have. Yeah. And with, with Haynes King's legs, mm-hmm. the the comparison between Haynes King and Zach Kelzada this offseason was if Haynes King gets in trouble, or mm-hmm. I'm sorry, if Zach Kelzada gets in trouble, he can at least get you 10, 15, maybe 20 yards if need be. Mm-hmm. But with Haynes King, if he, if he gets in trouble, he can get you that extra 15, 30, 40, yeah. maybe 50 yards. It's unexpected. He, and you think about it, the way he ran from where I was sitting to, to his right, and he, he saw that he wasn't going to get anywhere there, and he made the circle to go <laughs> all the way around. He just ran over he 50 did. yards. <laughs> to to get to get what 10 12 yards he got, yeah, he got four, 14 yeah. he got 14 14 and he he had a he had a I want to say it was a linebacker or defense defensive end on him trailing him but mm-hmm. he was able to outrun him sideways there's not very many quarterbacks that I can remember in AM history that have been able to do that other than Manzel yeah. uh Tyler Murray Kyler Murray was able to do that, but the thing is, Kyler Murray didn't see the field very often. That's the reason nope. he left. Yeah, exactly. You know. Yeah. But with Haynes King, he's going to open up a lot more things that we haven't seen the past four years, five years. Yeah. yeah. And with that arm too, that arsenal that he's got on 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 his on his shoulder, right there. I mean, that guy he can throw. Yeah, he, yeah, he can throw it. He can sling it. Man. And so that, that, that he wasn't scared to sling it too, not to uh, no. you know cut you off, no. but he wasn't scared to sling it. No, that's what yeah. a lot of us want to see. Hey, are you scared mm-hmm. to throw the football? Yeah, and that's why he threw so many interceptions. But he wasn't scared to throw. I'm gonna throw it. I mean, that's, yeah, he got picked that's, off. That's part of it. If you want a, a quarterback that can throw, mm-hmm. sometimes he's gonna throw interceptions. Mm-hmm. There, you know, that's part of learning as mm-hmm. a young quarterback. Right. He, there, there was one. There was one pickoff he got to Jalen Watermeyer, and yeah. he tried to force it to Jalen, and he just—that's just something you learn. I think he threw it behind him, and it ended up getting picked off. That, that's just learning process. Yeah. You, you can't want something so bad, mm-hmm. and then you finally have it, and you're like, "That's what I saw last night online." It was like you finally got what you've been wanting—a quarterback that can run, that can throw, that can, that can take defenses and just make them think, you know, mm-hmm. but then come back when he does something wrong and be like, man, I bet y'all wish Mon had his, what stayed for his fifth year. It's like, uh, no, no, <laughs> don't go and bash this young kid because he just made a mistake. Yeah. You know, this yeah. is his first game, his first big game. Yeah. There's going to be growing pain. Next weekend, I'm sure there's going to be growing pains. I don't expect AM to run up the score 51 to 13. You know, uh, on my show, on one of my shows last week, mm-hmm. I, I, I was pretty unsure if, if uh, AM was going to cover. You know, they had a 29 and a half over under. And mm-hmm. I was like, man, I'm not really sure about that because, you know, all the hype with Kent State and they scored almost 50. 50 points and I was like I guess this defense I don't see them scoring much but you know it the whole question was with AM's offense were they going to be able to were they going to be yeah. able to cover the spread yeah. and I was like you know I'm going to I'm going to pick them by I think they might mm-hmm. get it by 30 they might get it by a point or two and I was almost right I mean they only covered by by two points I think or a point and a half mm-hmm. so um but yeah I mean it's this is going to be it's 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 almost an experiment, but it's not. This isn't something that's going to go wrong, or if right. it goes wrong, Haynes King's going to come out. I don't expect things to go wrong. He's a good quarterback. 
we saw that when he was with Longview. Mm-hmm. It's just it's gonna it's gonna take some work. It is. Yeah. yeah. But the good thing is the team is around him. You know, yeah. you were talking about the defense, that offense, that new offensive line, they were around him the whole time. They yeah. were helping him. They, yeah. they they blocked they blocked their asses off for him all day. Yeah. And they did. They did. Line. They they contained. They really did. Yep. What what you got, E? Man, I'm just I'm just ready to see the guys grow, man. I'm, it it, it, it excites you to see a team and to know where a team was a year ago, mm-hmm. and when they come out in the first game, you you can already see the improvements. Mm-hmm. The route, the route running from a a night. I don't know if y'all paid attention, but a nice route running was crisp when last they- year. Last year on his routes, he, he sometimes he rounded his routes. Sometimes he'd get out there and just start freestyling. This year, mm-hmm. he's running the routes a lot more crisp. Mm-hmm. So that's that's going to create throwing lanes. And then you got Haynes; he can run. He's going to create throwing lanes with his leg, bro. The 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 limit for this team is whatever the li- the limit they want to set. Yeah, they want to go. They want to go win it all. They got everything right now to go win it all. Yeah, and they do. They do. They got. They got it all. Uh, and then I talk about. I talk about Leon O'Neill. Uh, that post game press conference. I don't know if y'all. If y'all really horned in on it. Mm-hmm. That man. Yeah. It was so excited mm-hmm. that he that he was damn near brought the tears. Speaking mm-hmm. not speaking about himself, speaking about his teammates. Mm-hmm. When you got that kind of passion. Yeah. And you're an effectuous person. That shit trickled down, man. Yeah. Yeah. It, it trickles down. So like that's why it's really not much to say. I mean, we could talk about now. We what we can talk about is how everybody talking about Haynes King turning the ball over three times. Mm-hmm. I want them to go back and look at any FCS opponent or or less or a lesser opponent that we played against with Kellen Munn and look at his stats. Haynes King threw for 292 yards. Mm-hmm. Kellen Munn, he had spurts. He threw for he'll, – he'll go like Clemson. He threw for uh, 400-something yards. Then he went – we played against somebody else. He threw for 110. If this yes, man coming out – you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, he, he – Kellen wasn't – Kellen wasn't a consistent quarterback. If Haynes exactly. King exactly. comes – if, if all Haynes got to do with his legs, and we, we know he's plenty capable of passing the ball, all he got to do is be consistent. Yeah, two hundred. I mean, he, he, technically, I feel like he should have threw for about if you if you take away some of them tip balls, and then one of his interceptions, he was actually throwing it over the tight end, mm-hmm. and the tight end tipped it, and they picked it off. Mm-hmm. That was when we were down by the end zone, but that should have mm-hmm. been a touchdown. So mm-hmm. technically, Haynes should have threw for yeah, he should have threw for like it. Yeah, at least by three hundred twenty. I'm gonna yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You go ahead, Jay. No, go ahead. He should have threw for about 325, 330 yards, three touchdowns, two interceptions. Yeah. That is not a bad game. That is not a bad game. So it's not. I, don't, I, I just – I'm just ready, man. I'm just ready. I'm really – I got October 9th circle. That's what I'm waiting on. But we got <laughs> we got to get better. Like I said, we got to get better each week. Yeah. But yeah. Seeing, seeing him week one, man. Hmm. This team's gonna be phenomenal, man. It's gonna be a great season, and it is. It is, and great to season. talk about that too, like you say, uh, like you say, man. Just, 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 just to talk about that, and we we gonna wrap it up here just a little bit. But man, just talk about that with Haynes King. So, like I say, the difference with this game was that we got off close to six hundred total offensive yards. Never. What the hell have we ever sat here? In our four year stint, because this is year four now, now kicks off year four for Jimbo Fisher. When have we seen in a three years of us watching Jimbo Fisher coach Texas and we had almost close to uh, 600 yards? That was the biggest difference and the biggest takeaway for me. That was the biggest positive for me. We got almost 600 yards, man. I told a lot of people that we will have two 1,000-yard receivers this year. Uh, just so happened, I think it's going to be Caleb Chapman, which 
which I called four balls, four balls, by the way, 92 yards, zero touchdowns. Anaya Smith, eight receptions, 100 plus yards, two touchdowns. And Anaya Smith got on the press conference himself and said that, yeah, the stats look good. That wasn't my best game, though. I don't like it. He said he didn't like it. Mm -mm. He, he can do way better than what he had did. That's called the toughness and the culture of what not only Jimbo Fisher has built, but the whole team in general has yep. built. They want to be better because they know they are better. They want to be more talented all around because they know that they are talented. It's no reason for them not to score over 40 plus points a game if they just really want it. If we just really wanted to, you know what I mean? Against lesser competition. It's, it's, it's no reason they can't. Uh, it, well, there's no reason they can't. Just like you said, now, uh, Haynes King threw about three interceptions. To be honest with you, if Haynes King wouldn't have threw those three interceptions, that game would have been a 65 or a 70 point route. It would have been like 65 or 70 to 10. And that, that, that would have been nothing else to discuss after that. Seriously, man. So, Kent State helped themselves out by, you know, getting those three little turnovers. But it was Haynes, like Haynes King, first, first big, big game uh, at his home stadium. Yeah. Um, and what I will say is this year, so far as rushing is concerned, uh, A-Chain and Spiller combined, I, I don't see too many teams stopping those guys. I can tell you like this here, if you stop one guy, from reaching 100 yards, you ain't going to stop the other. Oh, no. You're not going to stop the other. But that didn't – those weren't the only guys. You had Ernest Cromwell to get out there, in which he's been away. He had three for 18. His yards per carry, six. Six yards per carry. And that was with Ernest Cromwell. He didn't see that much playing time. I understand that. The only reason why he didn't – didn't get that many rushing yards is because Zach Kelzada got out there and threw that uh threw that fifth turnover. So that's how it ended up being fine. Uh he threw that fifth turnover. Uh but with Zach, man, <coughs> I believe Zach will be good. He just has to keep on building. Uh I'm very happy that we do have Zach as a backup because Zach can sling. Zach can sling. Now, that turnover late, late in the game, man, I, I don't know what Zach was doing, but I think Zach, uh, uh, Zach was either trying to throw it away or he was just trying to make a play. The reason why he done that, though, like I say, he was trying to make a play is because he knew Haynes King was right over the shoulder. That's the starting quarterback. He was starting for a reason. Um, he didn't look all that good, you know, so far stats-wise, but what we've seen, he has the potential to be a huge playmaker for this team. What we will have going forward for this 2021 season is a strong home field advantage. Yeah, I don't know there's no team in the country that can come to AM this year in general and beat this team. I have not felt this way. Man. Ever. In, 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 in at least, uh, what, hell, when we come over here, 2012. Okay, don't let it be with you. Man, it, yeah, it's probably been since uh, 2013. Dude. I have not felt this comfortable at home. I know we're playing Bama at home, so that's why everybody's actually waiting on that game. We're not looking all the way to that game, but we're waiting for that game because we know we actually have a real home field advantage. Advantage, yeah. It's going to be on the team to, you know, get the plays in line for sure. But we have a strong home field advantage over any team that's coming in, regardless that, of what they're ranked at. It's that intense atmosphere mm -hmm. that when you have a good team, the fans are going to show up and they're going to thrive off of that. Those mm -hmm. players and, the, and it just feeds off of each other, of course. You yep. know, that, that's it. And you got yep. that intense atmosphere. Mm -hmm. I would hate to be an opposing player on 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 the field 
and just hear that roar. It's got to just, you know, after that interception returned for the touchdown, <sighs> how loud that got, man, that's got to be like bone shaking when a, when a, when a hundred thousand people just go roar like that, man, that's, that's big. That got me. That got me. I mean, the entire stadium just was livid. And to not only say that with the Leon O'Neill interception, because that dive in the end zone is what made everybody get out their seats. Because we knew at that point in time, Leon O'Neill feeling it. And he wasn't going to let everything go by. The person that we're not mentioning, though, on defense is Jalen Jones. You want to know why we're not mentioning him? They never threw the ball to his side. They didn't for once in the entire game throw the ball to Jalen Jones. They said, the hell with that. Don't throw it over there. Throw it somewhere else. And they tried to throw it somewhere else. But the safeties, man, the safeties, they were that damn good. Hey, also, you another what, guy. What'd you say? Hey, you remember what I told you before the season? I said, Jalen Jones going to control one side of the field by itself. <laughs> mm -hmm. I told you that. And he got that. He yes, got sir. that on the Man. And for the rotation, the rotation. Let's go ahead and get this straight. We never seen a rotation this heavy on defense. For that depth chart to be that stack where uh, we all literally sat there at the game and saw guys get rotated in and out, that, that was crazy. To, me. to see the defensive backs get rotated in and out is what got me to like, okay, yeah. Yeah, okay, like now now it's on. It's yeah. on rolling. They have an official depth chart to go up against any team in the country and say, hey, it's your offense against our defense. Well, my love. It's your offense against our defense. Come on, let's do it. You got guys rotating in and out, but we're going to do the same thing. You want to run a hurry-up offense? Because, let's get man, that team ran a hurry-up offense, dude. Hurry up. Mm -hmm. And we shut the whole hurry-up offense down. I ain't I seen nobody wind it. Everybody in shape. Everybody ready. Wow, yes. And they were all conditioned. Minds were right. And uh, and to see those guys do the field goal at the uh at, at the end of the game when they called all them timeouts. Man, you remember that? Did, did you stay for the whole game, uh Jay Jay Sims? Yeah, I was there the whole game. I was there. They called a timeout with three seconds left. <laughs> You don't know how mad the stadium got, man. We were so pissed off. We was like, oh, they going to really call? So we sat back down. We were like, oh, okay, all right, whatever. The one, crowd one, got one. so loud when they called that time by for the field goal, man. That dude missed yeah. the kick from 17 yards out. He missed it. I saw it. that. He at, shanked it. He hit that wow. Man, at one point, we thought the coach, that the coach uh, for Kent State had money on the game because all it was going to do <laughs> it it, it would have it would have covered it for Kent State. They would have yeah, like, like twenty nine. Yeah. <laughs> so everyone, I, I was looking at Twitter and was like, man, the coach must have some money on Kent State for this one because <laughs> twenty nine. He's trying to hit that twenty nine. That that wow. twenty nine and a half. And he ain't get it. He Hell ain't no. get it. No. I mean, he no, he missed, I say, yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> hey, boy, we about to beat some teams out here this year, man. All I'm saying is that hey, you ain't got a field goal kicker. Might not be able to beat us this year. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> um, but like I say, man, running backs were electric. Uh, to see A chain break out for how many yards was that? 80? Is that an 80? 80 some yard run? 60 yard six, run? 64? 63, 63, 64. Oh my God. Yeah, I think it was 64. Yeah. And we got loud at that. He broke one mm -hmm. tackle and immediately when he had broke that one tackle coming up the middle. I say, man, he gone. Mm -hmm. And when I seen him going to another gear, it's like he got to a certain yard line and he said, oh, okay, going to another like gear. He, like he was running mm. a 40. Once he got 40 yards away, he just cut it. Yeah, he, he, he hit the spark button. And that was it. That was it, man. I say, man, once again, I think we're about to have 1,000-yard rusher and uh, one eight to 900-yard rusher. This year, I think we may have 2,000 yards receiver or at least one receiver with 1,000 yards. I do honestly believe that the Mondings will have at least 500 yards catching this year. 
That's that's just me. I think he'll have 500 yards catching and about three to maybe four touchdowns to get him ready to go into the next season. I think they want Caleb Chapman to be what he was last year. We seen a yep. glimpse of it. He just got hurt. We seen a glimpse of it though, and we was like, okay, we know what Caleb Chapman has. You have to, you have to really go and prove that you're still capable of being that, that guy. Yeah, you know what I mean. Anaya's Anaya's gonna do his name. Oh. Chase Lane, Chase Lane is still a third down threat, man. She first they first catch. Third and what, 36? First down? Yeah, I just – I don't know where Chase Lane came from. Uh, I saw him when he had got recruited, though, because he came from St. Pies up the street from me out here in uh, Houston. I just didn't know how good he was. This this is a pure third down team all over. We make our livings off third downs, and, and, yeah. and it is crazy to me. And we're going to continue to do that. Third down, third down, third down. I think we were like, what were we? Nine, nine, out, of nine out of thirteen. Nine of thirteen. Yeah, nine of thirteen. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So hey, but uh, any closing comments, man? You guys want to say before we wrap this on up? I'm gonna just tell. I'm gonna just tell y'all this because a lot of people, all A and M, they look basic. They do stay that. What a lot of people don't understand, the first game of the season, the coach don't open up the playbook. All the way. He run, he, he's very manila. Yeah. He, he, he's, he, if you watch the game, we didn't really switch switch formations. We ran a base package. Yeah. The more and more we progress into the season, the more and more he's going to open up the playbook. Now, that might also be in result because of uh, injuries. Like you said, he wanted to see where guys were. So look, yeah. we're gonna run yeah. this, this, this. The, we got these forty plays that we can run multiple plays out of, but we're gonna stay in this base formation. Mm -hmm. They, they better be, they better be aware. They better open their eyes, like like Leah and I say, wake them up. Mm -hmm. We here to stay, and when he open their playbook up, it's gonna be a whole nother animal. I believe, I believe, and I honestly, uh, I honestly believe Baylor Cook, he will shine. In the same game that Demond Demons will have his shine in, uh, wow. I noticed that a lot of people didn't they mention Baylor. That's pretty low. Uh, but we are going to see Baylor in just a minute. Just hold on, just hold up, people. Baylor Cup will get out there. We didn't see him last night, but they're holding those guys for a reason. I think Colorado game, they're about to open big time. If they come out of that game with about seven hundred. Some y'all, the total offense, it's mm -hmm. going to be one of those, man, don't say I didn't tell y'all. So I told y'all that this was going to happen. It's going to happen. We, we, we were just waiting on the right game to let it loose. And I think the Colorado game is the game that they're going to let loose. Why? Because they're in Colorado. They're the neutral site, in which I don't, I don't understand why they're a neutral site, but it is what it, they're in Colorado. I just don't understand why they're in New York. It don't make sense. Yeah. Don't I, think, make sense. I mean, Colorado is still a home team. Right. I think originally the it was supposed to be home and home, and then COVID kind of canceled that. And uh, I, I want to say it was Colorado's idea to move it to uh, to Mile High. Mm. So, yeah. Okay. I, I'm not sure because all that does is open up more uh, av availability for A and M fans to go. So. Yeah, not it does. Really it does. Now, if that game is sold out, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna be surprised because, golly, shit, we can sold out Colorado Stadium. But it's 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 a lot of people from uh from a And M that does want to go up there. I've been hearing that all season. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of guys have already taken off, and they're they're going to go up there. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to make it. But I have heard at least fifty percent of the fan base is going to be there. If I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Yeah, so be expecting to see a lot of burgundy out there. Uh, that game will be on. I think come on at two thirty for people that didn't know. Um, now Saturdays can't get here fast enough for me. Oh, <laughs> short week this week. We so, got hey, yes, short week Day, this I mean, week. Well, Labor Day Monday, so we're gonna blink. Yeah. So we're gonna be rolling yeah. again, but we are, we are. But uh, any closing remarks, Jay Sims? Anything? Um, this is it's gonna be a like I've said. 
uh, several times this off season. It's going to be a fun ride, man. It is. Um, there's going to be aches and pains. Mm. Just stick by this young quarterback, and it it will. We will see a a rainbow beyond the horizon. Is it? It's, it, it's mm. going to be there, man. It's going to be there. Mm-hmm. You know, it's um, and I find that was good on you to uh to check out the the Demas when he came off the field after after that one play in the red zone. I saw mm-hmm. that too, and mm-hmm. uh, Coach Fisher he was talking to him saying basically I think he was saying the same thing that you said. Uh, just hold on, I know you were, I know you were open, but just you'll have yeah. your time you'll have your yeah. time and if you remember uh i think it was the next play uh, on the next um the next uh time we got the ball mm. uh there was a a run by i don't think it was spiller i don't remember who it was but it was almost a touchdown and uh demas was the one blocking for yeah. uh form and okay. uh, D- demas's guy got away from him and, yeah. and was able to knock the ball carrier out of bounds, mm. but uh, okay, it, you know he's he's gonna make plays. He will he will get he, his chance. He will get he, his chance. He's gonna get his chance. Oh, you know, and yeah. see another thing. Uh, like I say before we get up out of here, a lot of people don't even much know that most Muhammad was on the field. People, yeah. Amos and most Muhammad were both on the field. Anybody who was thinking that both once again, anybody who's thinking both these guys on the field. Y'all can stop it, man. Yeah, we 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 got a lot of wide receivers to choose from. I'm sorry. These guys will get their time. The thing about it is that if you guys hadn't transferred now, they're not gonna do it. I'm, so. I'm 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 being dead honest with you. Those guys have bought in. Uh both of them still look really, really talented. Uh, <laughs> and they will be okay. I I didn't see all kind of tweets talking about hashtag free demons. I yeah, it's 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 crazy, man. Trust me. When these guys yeah. get ready, it's a lot of people that's gonna be mad. It, that, mm-hmm. it, it's, it's a lot of people saying they want to see them from other teams, but then again, when they do see them, it's gonna be a lot of people trying to say, "Oh, what? Well, oh, well, he be pushing off from the receive all the time." Oh, you are gonna hear a lot of. It. So, okay, when, when the time comes, it come. It's it's going to come. Yeah. But expect it. You know, uh, like I say, man. Let's go ahead, and get on the body here. Uh, e, it didn't got pretty late over there with you. Cause if Boy, it's seven, what? if it's seven thirty over here, then it's eight thirty over there, close to nine. Man. Yes, sir. Okay, so we gonna go ahead and wrap it up once again. Thank you everybody for tuning in to this uh to this podcast chat about the overreaction. Please let us all know. What you guys thought about the game last night, man? We would love to know what you guys had thought. Uh, also, please uh, follow Jay Sims on his podcast with the over and under. Isn't that right, Jay Sims? Yes, sir. Thank, under you. thank you for the shout out. Yeah, it's over under uh, podcast. It's a uh, me and a a friend of mine, Matt. He lives in North Carolina. I'm trying to make him into an A and M fan. He's got he's got some Aggie uh, in his uh, some Aggies in his family. Okay. So, uh, but yeah, we're we're trying to bring him over our way, and mm-hmm. and he he's been watching some games, so he's gonna help me break down some things throughout the season. Okay. Cool. Okay. Cool. That's what's up. Hey, man, that'll work. That'll work. All right, man. Of course, you guys already know Mr. E. Crenshaw. Uh, you guys already know what he does. Uh, mobile, mobile diesel, uh, mechanic. So hey, you guys ever need him? Look him up. Look up his Instagram page as well, as you can see. He. He got a toy in the background back there gluing under the there he is. She lit up, man. All right. Gluing under the truck. <laughs> he ready to ride out, man. Hey, she I told you, man, I told you she rolling on. Hey, Jay, when we cut, I'm picking you and your wife up from the house. Matter of fact. <laughs> right. You and your wife will be escorted <laughs> to the oh, state. And you know what? Oh, okay. You know what? I'm 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 gonna hold you to that. I'm going to you. hold you to that. Uh, because like I said, I already <laughs> said, when we go down there, uh, but e- even if you don't pick it up, dude, you know, just a little kid thing, uh, we are going to run out of that, uh, But that's if it's a night game. If, if it's not a night game, of course, we're going to come on back to that. Yeah. If it's a night game, in which I'm going to tell y'all like this here, it's not going to say once again, if it's a night game, 
The last time we played Alabama at night, we lost by eight points. And that was with a very bad team that year. That team awesome was team. that team was horrible. We lost by eight. That's all I'm saying. Mm-hmm. It's a night game. Marcus for the win. Even if it's an evening game, still Marcus for the win. But if it's a night, that's a whole different atmosphere. Yeah. Nobody wants to see that team at night. So, hey, uh, it's a homemade podcast sports with Toast J Pops. Have a good one, guys. Hashtag Giggum. Giggum. Giggum.